Repeat again. Okay. Maybe we'll just start with a word of prayer. Father, we thank you for the opportunity to come together as your church, to learn your word, to look into our lives and see how things are, Lord, and are we living in the center of your purpose and plan for us? Are we living in alignment to your uh, ways? Um, and Lord, as you lead us and as we discover our situations, that you will help us align, obey, and rest, O oh God, in you. Lord, I pray and thank you for each and every person here, Sunny, Printo, Donna, Shuba, Angel, and Hannah. We thank you for each one of us, Lord, as we study together. And uh, Lord, we help us to realize how much our brothers and sisters are to us, the value they are to us in this grand, great community of your church, Lord God. We thank you so much. Help us, lead us, guide us. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Okay. So, uh, yeah. So here I was explaining that for Hannah, and just giving kind of a uh, kind of a background for you. What all has been done so far? I will put it on a white board so that it becomes more clear than if I just speak. Uh, the most important thing is for you to watch the videos. It is time consuming for you. Uh, you will have to uh, read the, uh, watch the videos. Otherwise, you will not understand uh, what we are doing because there's a lot of content that we have we have developed as a with videos because um, uh, we have done a lot of reviews. We have read uh, did a lot of articles. Uh, so if you will see the videos, you will kind of catch up with everything. And you need to, uh, oh, this thing is not working right. Hold on. Okay. We have done uh, a lot of intro to the course. I, uh, have you, have you watched those intro videos? What all it contains, what the, how the course will work? All of those things have you found out the core modules, map, schema, uh, ma uh, life, I mean, um, um, ministry practicum, those four, uh, uh, the pillars of this course. And then that is there in the intro, in the intro video. Then we have uh, two articles, critical articles that you need to read, which is uh, Gene Getz, uh, Three Lenses. And we read Gordon Fee, uh, the historical precedent, the historical precedent of Book of Acts. And these two will help you to uh, read Acts correctly. From the reading of Acts, you are supposed to work on the second competent, the second issue of the unit, wherein we are supposed to draw out the keys that keys that helped in the uh, expansion and establishing. Uh, uh, of the early church. So you read from 1 to 28 and you draw out keys. Now keys are generic things like, like uh, uh, first, uh, let's say, uh, prayer is a key. So as you read, you found prayer was a key in expansion. Prayer was also a key in establishing of the early church. Let's say persecution. Now that played a role in expansion because people are running away from the persecution. So wherever they went, they seeded the gospel. So it was an expansion strategy. Then let's say um, fellowship. 
was more of a establishing strategy. So like that, we will, as you read the book, we have these generic things. I just give you a few of them. There are hundreds of them. You can draw out. And when you say prayer, then you show in uh, Acts uh, chapter 3, verse 5, uh, it says that uh, all the believers got together and prayed for Apostle Peter as he was arrested. And uh, they prayed for boldness. So prayer was a key. How it helped in the expansion and establishment. So you can do that. So when you are reading the book of Acts, you from these two articles, you will get uh, the idea that Acts can be broken into different ways, classified in different ways. For example, Paul, um, I mean, uh, Peter, Stephen, and Paul. Uh, you have Philip also in between. So you can put it like that, or you can put it as Petrine and Pauline, the majority text are in this way. You can put it as uh, Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and ends of the earth. You can classify it like that. So you can classify under Jerusalem all the keys. You can classify under Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth, keys like that. Or there are uh, six blocks based on summary statements. Statements that Luke makes as you read the book of Acts. So from one to, uh, I think it is six, I'm not sure. One chapter one, one verse one to six something. And then from six to nine, nine to 12, uh, 12 to 16 and 16 to, uh, I think eight, 20 years, something like that. So there is, if you read the, the article, this is there that it can be broken into six blocks based on the summary statements. And these, each block you can draw, read and draw the keys from those blocks. So whichever way you classify, you re read and draw out the keys for expansion and establishing. That's the unit one. I think this would help everyone, right? Because you would have also only recovered or, um, uh, kind of remembered what we did into this thing. So when you list out and and you uh, you in your first competency, after you do this, you uh, write an intro duction where you will uh, talk a little bit about um, uh, how you read how you read. Acts. So you say that you know the different aspects that you that you know Acts can be read like a story. Can be mostly people read it as devotional, but it has a catechetical function. Basically, the Great Commission is worked out in the life of the apostles and the early church in the planting and listing of churches. And then you say that um, when you read Acts, you need to find out what is normative. And what is mm, uh, form, what is function, and what is form, what is normative, what is patterns. Uh, so when normative is what is valid then and valid now, patterns and forms can change with time and culture. So based on this understanding, you have read uh, uh, the three lenses of history, scripture, and uh, culture. So three lenses are there. So you explain how when we read the book of Acts, history is, it plays, there is a lens of history that you look through. There is a lens of scripture you look through and there's a lens of culture that you look through. So then you realize that, you know, not everything is normative. There are things that are normative, but there are things that are just cultural or that is just historical, okay? So then you, after you finish that introduction, then you'll say the classification. So here you state the Great Commission and how Acts is the how the Great Commission was worked out. Then you write the classification. The classification is uh, Petrine Pauline, Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, or the six blocks. After that, you write the keys of the first block. So Acts 1, 1, Acts 1, 1, 2, whatever it is. And they write down expansion keys. What all the expansion keys you see in that block? What all establishment keys we saw? 
it's only basically one generic word and one sentence and one verse one the word a sentence explaining what that key is and you give a reference from where you took so that will be do those things like that you finish all the blocks you can go and some people have written 50 pages some people have written 30 pages some people have written 20 pages there are people have written as low as as low as eight pages and i've cleared okay so that's how you do the competency one okay then after that we did what we call as map motivated abilities pattern what was this about discovering your divine hard wiring how god has hardwired you what is the gifting that you have so they help you discover this through a series of uh, uh and i mean there's an exercise that you do which you will uh, you which you will. so you write in this uh 20 achievement summaries Guys, I'm not discussing because this is just lectures that I have to give, which you can recollect. 20 achievement summaries. What are the things that you will see? What you did, not somebody else did, not what your mother told you, what you did. What you enjoyed doing. Okay. What you think you did well. Okay, and it's maximum of two to three sentences. So you have to list down one to 20 achievement summaries. From these 20 achievement summaries, spread across uh, early childhood, uh, early childhood, no, childhood. Uh, I'm not sure of the classification was early childhood. Um, no, childhood. Uh, what is that? Oh God. Anyway, I should tell that. So you it is divided early, it. Early adulthood. Early, no, early childhood. Yeah, childhood, early adulthood. Uh, middle, adulthood and middle, adulthood. middle adulthood and late adulthood. So whatever, wherever, whichever level you are, you will uh, write down from, suppose you are, I am in middle, I have till here. So I can take equally as much as possible from these time zones. If you are only till here, equally take it from this. So 1 to 20, 20 to 40, 40 to 60, and 60 to uh, whatever it is. So... If you are whichever age group. So if you're only if you're less than 40, then you need to write only till here. If you have crossed off 40, you need to include till here. So you are taking incidents, what you did, not somebody else did. If somebody gave you a prize, that's not your achievement. Somebody else gave you. How did you earn it? What and that what you're writing as achievement summary should be something that you enjoyed doing. And what you think you did well, not somebody else did told well. So that's how you should choose your achievement summaries. Some things can be very ridiculous what you write. You played marbles and game of marbles and you won. But you can write that, provided it's what you did, what you enjoyed doing, and what you think did best. And when you write this, first part is, um, the first question is, one second, hold on. I can not able to recollect my brain is on function at this point. It's shut down, shutting down actually. Where is the book's gone? Yeah. One sec. Yeah. <clears throat> is that on your cloud? I am not you know, getting you there now because we have short of time and I'm just too tired out and shutting down. The listing with the achievement sum summaries is. Uh, Yeah, one second. one second. When you expand it, it is how you how you got 
involved in the activity. You write about three to four sentences. Two, how you went about doing the activity. That is the heart of it. I mean, how you did it, what activity, how you got involved, what led you to do the activity. Third, what did you enjoy? What was most satisfying in this activity? So this you had to write. It's about a page you need to write. So here about two to three sentences. Here about three to four sentences. Here about six to eight sentences. So it's about a page you need to write. So out of the 20 achievement summaries, what you did, what you enjoyed doing, two to three sentences that you're writing, you choose eight, sub, eight out of these achievement summaries and expand them. And in your expansion, the first part should answer this, how you got involved in the activity. Second part is how you went about doing it. Third, now if you open your cloud, I just opened the cloud for you and show you that it is here. And the book is so self-explanatory, okay? Very, very self-explanatory. So I have logged into my cloud. Oh, more, more, more. March 10th was my last submission. I have to work on it. Yeah. So I go to the library. And in the library, you can come down to. Oh, there's a book on parenting as well. Wow. Identifying. Okay. It's a very, very simply written book. So you can just read through it. Just read through it. It will guide you step by step what to do. Step by step. So your competency number one is step one and step two. Your competency number uh, two uh, is step three to step seven. And your competency number eight is the combining of all of it. So you have three competencies in map that you need to submit. So when you have done your listing your achievement summaries and expanded the eight, you, have, you can submit it. Most of you should have done it by now. But before you do it, when you, before you submit it, this has something called collaboration. You need to sit together, collaborate, look at each other's work, agree, correct, tell, and that whatever your discussion is of correction or affirmation has to be recorded. So then you can submit it. So that's where you look at the book. The book has everything inside it. It's very simple. We have videos of it already recorded. You can uh, watch that. And also you can, Susanna, can you on the fan? I can also sit with you whenever you have doubts or queries. You can Sit with me and I can help you with that. Um, feel free to call me and you can sit and work this out. So this is map, okay? This is how you work it out. You read the book and after you have done this, then this is for step one and two. Step one and two. Okay, now let me go to the next step. Steps three to seven. What you're going to use is the data the data in the eight expansions, data in the eight expansions. You will read the eight expansions and take out all the nouns, markets. And these nouns will come under some of the categories they give in the document that they give, the template you work with. That you need to go through it. I mean, it's very, it's not easy to tell you how to do it because we have done that extension. Then the next one, you take the verbs. So motivated uh, subject matter, motivated, uh, most motivated activity, then most more. So that I'll just, I'll just take you there so that you understand what I'm trying to say. Yeah. 
this is very very easy to read if you read it it's so easy for you to do it they explain to you every single thing what to do what you should not do what are the mistakes you can make very very simple not at all difficult okay yeah early childhood early adulthood middle adulthood and late adulthood okay then these are all guidelines how you do it 20 achievement summaries there are templates available on the cloud you can download it and type right into it you don't have to um, you know make all these things then you expand expanding so achievement access somebody there's an example also here so you can easy to do it example number two see okay. fill the worksheet achievement number somebody one so what is that how you got involved but there's a template already available you can just type it and show i will show you the my sample so that you can look at so after you finish the eight expansions here okay and you must remember you must collaborate discuss your conclusions you have to collaborate otherwise they will not accept your document identifying your motivated subject matter here what you're going to do is mark the nouns okay mark the nouns and then the nouns can be put under ideas and concepts hardware and vehicles money finances i'll show you on the chart how it is okay and that's how you do it so there, there is motivated subject matter see all the nouns so these are your eight expansions and these are uh, nouns that come under emotions and feelings which you have marked so there is nothing in uh, expansion number one in this but in expansion number two there is something expansion number seven there is something but it's only two but this person has many others that would have been more. So like that, you mark, you have to mark all this. And then you come to, you carry out and find out which is the most subject matter that stimulates you. Identifying your motivated ab abilities. Here you mark the verbs and then you categorize it under this. And this is how your form looks. Same way, these are all the, your verbs will come under one of these things and you will mark them on your uh, template. And then you put them together, discuss your conclusions. Identifying your motivated circumstances. What circumstance really thrills you, okay? So you identify that from the, after when you read your eight expansions, you kind of figure out from this list, from this list, you will figure out, okay, causes, movements, challenges, tests, this adventure, cost, uh, you know, it's a challenge, test, competition, uh, from scratch, you like doing things from scratch. So those are the motivated circumstances that you really encourage. From your text data, you will see if any of them is there and you will mark it for each of the eight expansions, okay? That is how you did do that. The next one is uh, identifying your motivated operating relationships. Uh, relationship with your boss how is it relationship with your peers how it is so which relationships really motivate you which really stimulates you that you need to discover from your eight expansion so when you expand you should expand it correctly with enough detail so that the data will be correctly there easy for you to pick up okay and then the same way you have a form that you need to fill okay um and once that is done you go to identifying your motivated primary results. What stimulates you to do this activity uh, to see what, I mean, to which goal that is, I mean, the result by with which you have in mind with which you are working, that stimulates you. What is the result that is in your mind that you are seeing because of which you are doing what you're doing? So you can figure it out. They will teach you how to figure it out from your uh expansions and then you mark that on your uh form and you must remember after you mark all of your eight these things you will take the you'll take a total the highest three or four totals you will pull out as your motivated subject matter motivated ability motivated circumstances motivated results motivated operating relationships here you finish your seven and with that then you do a, a a collaboration and you can collaborate with somebody like your wife or husband or brother or sister to who really know you because the people in the cohort may not know you uh, but they can check the way whether you did it correctly or not so that's how it works okay 
ultimately you will get your top primary result or you know more liquid that more uniquely motivates me is this so you'll get your full motivated abilities pattern you will it is a very powerful discovering tool about recognizing your uh recognizing your motivated abilities pattern your uh hard wiring okay i i spoke so much i know for uh, hannah and Pratyusha, that would be very very new but don't worry i just gave a summary of it um and step eight is very just taking whatever you concluded put it together in one thing. for uh sunny printo angel susan and shuba i think this should be pretty easy because i just revised the whole thing with you. what do you all think Uh, revision of whatever we did so far. Okay. Now, uh, now, now that, uh, yeah. Now that yes. Uh, I think, how am I getting an echo with Trinto, you know? Anyway. Uh, because I am actually in a speaker and uh, I am in a speaker. Oh, okay, okay. Oh, Got it. Okay, okay. Yeah. Okay. Susan, how are you feeling? Uh, how is the situation for you? First, I have four more expansion to do. Four is oh. done, but four more is there. Oh, perfect. That's excellent. I mean, you've reached there. That's good. Oh, yes. That, that's there. good. That's good. I mean, that's a very good moment. Okay. What about your acts? Is anything started writing, writing anything on that? Uh, actually, I have uh, written a uh, few things, but uh, it's not like I have not finished it, but then, yes, I have started it. So okay. simultaneously, I have started it. Good. But it's just started, yeah. Yeah. So you must remember, whatever you do to do in this unit one, is very foundational for the, all the courses you're doing, okay? The reading the book of Acts through and through, again and again, is so critical for you to do the full rest of the course in Acts. Also Pauline, also Essentials of Sound Doctrines, and the leaders. All of it, the the content that you're studying in Acts is very, very critical. Okay. So put in your effort, hard work in reading the book of Acts. And I'm telling you, it will spiritually nourish you. It will motivate you to get into missions. It will motivate to fulfill the Great Commission. It's amazing what discovery you will have as you read the second unit article, our famous Arthapatsy article. It's a very long article. It's like a commentary to the book of Acts, but read it along and then as you read it, you mark the most important thing, type it into your, uh, into your, uh, you know, your competency document and polishing, you can do it later. Okay. okay. But you must read Patsya and Acts together. Yes, yes. Okay. It's a tedious thing. I'm telling you, once you finish this particular competency, two, three, and four is, I mean, two, three, four, five is comparatively very easy. Okay. But if you don't do this properly, not only two, three, four, five will be difficult, when the rest of the course will be difficult. Okay. okay. So okay. okay. So about competency, whenever you do competency, I want you to know one more thing. Okay, we finish this. When you write a competency, you must remember there is something you need to do is biblical theology. What is biblical theology? You read a whole book or a para or a chapter. You read it in whole. And what is that book talking about? And how is it being put out by the original author? What is expected by the original audience to understand? So that analysis is basically you are getting biblical theology, the theology that flows out of the continuous reading of a text. It could be a book, it could be a paragraph, it could be a chapter, but you read it, in, you don't take one verse, but you read the whole thing to understand what the author is saying. So you always do biblical theology in all your competencies. And here you have to read the book of Acts. And as you read, so there are, when you write your competency, what do you keep in mind? Clarity. That means nice underlining, nice paragraphs, nice numbering, all of that as the as the uh, the evaluator is looking, it is so easy to see. Wow, very simple. Then complete 
Now, what is complete? Now, in the first competency, you have to write keys of expansion, keys of establishment of the in the uh, in the church in the early church. So, if you write only establishment or ex only ex uh, expansion, then you won't be complete. You need to have your all aspects of your competency question met in your competency expression. Okay. Um, then is accurate. That means what you are stating should be backed by was. It should not be some wrong information. So it should be accurate. Okay. Then you have supported. That means it is logical flowing. It's not disconnected paragraphs. There is a logical flow in the content. There must be it, it must be well supported by logic. Okay. And then uh, you have uh, what is that thing called? Okay, I'll just open this thing for you so that you know where to look at this. I know some of you will be thinking, what are we talking about? Don't worry, don't get scared. Patusha, don't get scared, okay? I'm gonna make it. Okay, let's go to Book of Acts, my Book of Acts, what I did. Okay, develop a basic understanding of the biblical keys of the establishment and expansion of the first century church in the Book of Acts. Okay, new assessment, clarity. So if you click here, can you see it? Is it crisp and readable? Can it be readily seen that a particular competency is being addressed rather than others? I mean, are you talking about what are you reading? I mean, whatever I'm reading should contain information regarding the competency that is asked. Is it easy to see strengths and weaknesses related to other criteria? Does it use subheadings, bolding, underlining it? Which we Indians are very good at actually. Correct. Clarity should be easy for you. We are Indians. We can do that. Okay, so when 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 I, when I check this, when I read your document, I will check for this. So first the student evaluates, then actually the local mentor is supposed to evaluate, but because I'm your local mentor and the associate faculty, straight away it comes to be associate faculty. So in, in this case, in minds, I evaluated and an associate faculty evaluated. So clarity, I was cleared, well developed. Now complete, what is complete? Does it address all parts of the competency that you have to evaluate first? Okay, accurate. Is it on target? Does it demonstrate an accurate understanding of the development of thought in the course? Supported. Are the ideas supported logically? Is evidence given to support claims that are made? Has a case or argument been built? Have explanations been given? For instance, is it biblical teaching used as a point of reference for examining ministry structures and practices in one's own tradition, not merely using verses to provide proof text and support for one's own tradition? That means to say you don't break the verses to the way you want it. It should be the way the, uh, the authors did it. Then you have a resource interaction. That means as you write, does it include interaction with the articles of the course? Now, there are three two articles in the first issue, one article in the second issue, together making the unit, all the articles should be referred to and made note of in your presentation. That means when you when you take an idea from the author, you need to refer the author, okay? Does it show engagement of thought, not mere quotations? You can't just cut paste. You can cut paste, but you need to say, hey, I agree with what Atapatia is saying. I may not agree with this particular issue, I'm not, I'm okay with what Gene gets says. You're interacting with the authors, okay? And not just mere quotation citations or bibli bibli bibliographic references. For instance, does it show where ideas came from? Comparison of ideas from various authors and opinions about the contributions uh, of some articles. That is your uh, resource interaction. And then they will evaluate your ministry leadership. Does it show reflection on substantial ministry experience? One minute, hold on. I got a call coming in. Hold on. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. 
Absolutely, ma'am. I'm at your service. Yeah. What time should I be there? Yeah, at eight o'clock I'll be there. Eight o'clock I'll be there. Yeah. 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 Sure. Sure. So, in ministry reflection, does it show reflection on what you what you studied and what you wrote, what you read? Okay. Does it show reflection on substantial ministry experience in the past? So, in your ministry reflection, what you write is from what you learned. How how is it in the past? Comparing it what you did in the past, or what you're doing in the present, or now that you know this is what the Bible is talking, but you are doing something else. You are accepted. Yeah, this is why I have read this now and I'm clear. This is what we're supposed to do. Now, the Great Commission is clear to me, but all my life I was only preaching the gospel. I never did anything beyond that. Uh, I did wrong. I'm so happy that I read this now and understood. And, you know, even recently I was just preaching the gospel. I gave the gospel and it just came back. I just made them pray that sinner's prayer, but I never followed up with them. But now I know I must follow up. It's part of the Great Commission. So, past, present, and now onwards, I'm going to do this. That's your ministry implementation. Are you and your situation explicit or almost no one else should be able to write a sample, same paper? That means your ministry reflection will make your paper unique because nobody else can write your experience, right? Nobody can write your uh, past, present, and future. Specifically, does it present your experience in terms of what, where, with, with whom, when, and for how long? It is your experience in terms of what, where, with whom, then, and how long. Does it include observations from the experience that reflect on what went well, what was challenging, what in fact was had on those who were taught? Does it show lessons learned from the experience about the skills of teaching content? That, that is my part. Okay, you don't need you guys don't have that part. Okay, then my part of it. So, Ministry of Reflection. Now, out of the, these are all important six compulsory ones that you need to meet. But you need to meet this, any of this. Now, if you wrote a good Ministry of Reflection, it will be usually a critical one. So, you don't have to worry. Because basically, you're critical of what you did in the past, right? To what you learned. So, when you critically look at it, hey, this is what I did. Oh, now I know what Great Commission is. So far, I did it wrong. I only preached the gospel. I made them sinners pray the sinners prayer, but I did not look after them after that. But today I know Great Commission has to do with follow up. Paul went then followed up with the people. So I think I should do that. So you're critical about it. So you automatically uh, click on critical. Okay. Now creative is, you know, let's look at what is creative. More charts of it. Does it show unique or personal style in its format? Does it use graphics, original charts, or other media? You can record a video also. All of it that can be uploaded. Of course, space is good. Does it have special literary effects such as original alliteration, particularly clever phrasing? All that's the creative. Okay, mostly charts is what they look at. Critical is, uh, does it use standards from the competency point as points of reference for evaluation? That means when you evaluated what you learned against your experience, does it show exercise of judgment, wisdom regarding options? For instance, does the ministry reflection include, ah, see, ministry reflection, includes assessment of ministry experience based upon standards related to the competency, okay? So this is basically, if you do a good ministry reflection, you'll get a good, you can sign off on uh, critical, okay? Now, collaboration is, does it show interrelationship of one's ministry with other individuals, organizations, and network, other than individual independence? Note that doing collaborative work with others on the document to be uploaded is not necessarily what is meant as collaboration. Now, in MAP, the collaboration means you all sit together, look at each other for your work, and see whether you did it correctly. Or, if you know the person very well, hey, what you found is correct. I think you're a person like this. So, that is an affirmation. Hey, this is not uh, what you should, how you should correct it. I don't think this is there. That is a, uh, a revision that you're suggesting. That is for MAP. Now, this is for your competency. So, this is how you will look at. Now, now, Bill Burns, after reading, that is the US evaluator, after reading it said, the posted artifact is a good start in demonstrating this competency. However, it needs further development to meet the following criteria. To meet the resource interaction criteria. Interestingly, he told me to do all this, but he cleared it. I don't know why. Okay, 
to meet the resource interaction criteria, the posted artifact should include interaction with the articles of the post. Uh, so I have, I have that is shortage for me. I have not interacted with articles and or other relevance. It should show engagement of thought, not mere quotation, citation, biblical. For example, it should show where the ideas came from, comparison of the ideas with other authors, and opinions about a contribution. To meet the creative criteria, the posted artifact should show some unique personal style format. It should use. So he put it cut basically cut patient from all the other things, but it showed me that I am deficient on things. But he cleared it for me. I don't know why. It ticked off. So that's how you do your competency. Okay. That's a revision for all of you. I did it. Now you can kind of figure it out how to do it. Okay. Now we finished uh, how to write the competency. What are the criteria you have to look? It's not that difficult. The first time, first two competencies will always be a study. After some time, it's like, you know, guys, people like Suma and Josh and all just strikes off on the first shot, they get it cleared. Joseph, John, Pastor Joseph, you know, all of them, you know, they struggled in the first two. Then now they all are clearing up in the first shot. Okay. So it's not difficult. As you see me speak, you may think, man, this looks impossible. This is never, I'll never make it and things like that. No, it's not true. Okay. You just have to start writing. And it will come. When you submit it, we may send it back to you. Please don't suffer from rejection. Not we are rejecting this thing. It's a good work, but you need to develop it further. We will give you guidelines of where to develop it. Okay. And you go read the guidelines and go and develop that part and then submit it again. It will get cleared. Okay. So, map and all you will, if you have written your collaboration, it will clear on the first shot because nobody can change anything what yours, what you felt and what you did. Right. So, so we finished uh, competencies. We finished uh, map, how you to do it. Now, I will we'll start about a little bit about life to the power n okay let me just open that we'll just do we'll look at only um a first part of it so which is very nice and you'll enjoy writing this okay so let me take you there life to the power n sorry mm. So life stewardship in community, life to the power and by Jeffrey, a beautiful tool. Step one, my story, what is my past and where am I going? Okay, very good exercise. I enjoyed this one. Then step two, from my story, looking at my past and where I'm going, I'm drawing my purpose. Why do I exist? Okay. Then step three, you will discover my abilities. What are my unique contributions? This is where your map will come. So your map findings in step eight, you will cut paste it to this in step three competency. Then with that, you will write a lot of things. I will show you. Now step four, my legacy. What am I intentionally passing on? Okay. Step five, my strategy. How do I make my legacy a reality? Step six, my habits. How can I pursue lifelong learning? Very, very beautiful. Very, very beautiful. Pastor, are you sharing the screen? Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. 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 Please forgive me. Life to the power N. It's there on the cloud. And here, first is step one, my story. What is my past? Where am I going? It's a lovely exercise. Step two, my purpose. Why do I exist? And if you figure this out, everything works. Three, my abilities. What are my unique contributions? This is where your map will come. Your map, which you did, right? That step eight, you need to cut paste it here. Okay. Step four, my legacy. What am I intentionally passing on? Step five, my strategy. How do I make my legacy a reality? Step six. My habits, how can I pursue lifelong learning? So let's go. Introduction. Life and life to the power and a concept that we can all grasp immediately. Life lived to the fullest. Life that reaches its full potential. Life that is full of meaning and purpose. 
life that is fully enjoyed, life that makes a difference. We all desire that kind of life. Yet many, if not most, fail to achieve life to the power M. Modern day life with all of its advantages often takes a toll on our lives. As we seek to become successful in our work, we may lose parts of our life. We may replace traditional wisdom with modern technology and while achieving a lot, we can lose some of the most important parts of life. Ancient wisdom traditions saw life as having, having four main parts. Part of life but what was the individual and all of his or her gifts, passions and opportunities. But also integral to life were the family, the local community and the world community. Wow, isn't that beautiful? So ancient wisdom always saw the individual in the context of family, the local community and the world community. All were woven into one concept of life and the life was not full unless it kept all of them in balance. Our life development process assumes these four main parts to real living, the individual life, the family life, the community life, and the life lived with purpose in the world community. So I, I will leave it here. I'm not going to teach you this fully because I've just done a revision of all of those things, but this is a beautiful exercise. I will just take you down a little bit. What is my past and what is that long? Purpose, my abilities, how can I make it? Whatever we read now. And then you come to my story. What is my past where I'm going? You need to write your story down. Okay. And they guide you for everything. You know, what are the ways to write your story? So nice. We'll read through everything. Okay. And uh, constructing your timeline. So beautiful. And it's very easy, your timeline, they'll give you a nice format. Okay, see this? The childhood, mentors, grandmother. So for Jeffrey, grandmother, Robert Zoe, you know, MR, they had shaping experiences, transitions, key message, key book read, early adulthood, 20s, workplace. So then he writes this middle adulthood. So this is how you try, draw your timeline. Okay, that we will look at it. Uh, this thing I think is enough for you to start working. At least if you can, I'm not going to make do life, and I don't want you to start doing that. I want you to focus on writing your acts. Competency one. Read the book of acts. Read Arthur Pats here. Read Gene Gets. Watch the videos. Make your attempt to write. Try working on your map. For uh, Hannah and uh, Patricia, don't bother about it. Just try to start watching the videos and start writing something. Okay? Can I pray and close for you? Father, we thank you for all of them as the children desire to uh, learn and study your word. I pray and thank you and bless them at this point. Pray for all of them who are struggling to write. I pray, Lord, that you give them the grace, the patience, and the joy to learn and study your scriptures, Lord God. Lord, I pray that you would bless them even this night as we go to our beds, that you be with us. And when Sunny brother, who's going to continue to work with us tonight, to be with him, Lord. We pray in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. Now I'm open to our questions, a little, to bit. questions a little bit. Please ask me questions. Please ask me questions. How many of you feel now you're overwhelmed with <laughs> this is not possible? I can't do it. Okay, sir, do you feel like that? Pastor, uh, this ministry reflection and uh, to the power of that. So those are uh, the next units, uh, the next competencies which we'll be going right in. No, 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 no. So we have four course, Acts. Uh, Acts has unit one, unit two, unit three. Correct? Okay. Yes, we yes, did yes. we did only unit one. Okay. And you have to write the competency for unit one. That is the competency question is already there. Map is another pillar where you are doing your work. 
Okay. It's also you need to upload, and it's a competency one. Map has three competencies inside. Acts has five competencies inside. Then you have life in which we started off. It has five competencies inside, and it's there on your. Uh, um, all of those details are there on your cloud. So you go to dashboard. I'll show you that. You can go to dashboard. I think I'm falling asleep. Okay, so forgive me. Uh, you go to your dashboard. My dashboard is complicated. It's a demon dashboard. So you can find your map, life in here. You can find your acts here. When you click open, you will find the question there. You'll find the question there. There is also a rubric sample artifact template. You can download this. All this is very useful. So see, I've uploaded here. See, acts competency one, George, which is now my people. So you can see I've written the five of them. And all of them I've got cleared. Okay. Okay. Any questions? All of you start reading the book of Acts and start writing your comments. Okay. One more thing I can show you. Some of you may be struggling to figure this out. So I'll just show you. Acts and my acts which I had submitted was not up to the mark. So it was my early days. Nobody was there to guide me. So I was not happy with what I submitted, but and I don't think even Bill was happy, but I'll just show you what I did so that you will have a sample to work with. Can you see my introduction? Then you can see how I have put a ministry reflection here, right? I mean, not ministry reflection, I'm sorry, resource interaction. But I wrote a nice introduction. Then I took some pictures and put, which is, of course, no value because it's not my idea. I took it from the text only. I kept it here because these uh, uh, competencies are going to help me tomorrow when I want to read and things like that. How the philosophy, ministry, of everything, all of this is there in your gene gets and lens of scripture. That is, amazing. all of these things are pictures I took from the book and put it inside. Nothing big deal. No, nothing of mine. The whole of the book of Acts can be classified in different ways. Some of the common ways are based on central figures like Petrine, Pauline, Stephen, Barnabas, Paul, based on geographical boundaries and the spread of the gospel. So after G. Patsia in the chapter geographical expansion, he talks about uh, you know this way of class. Phase one, keys to the expansion, one to one to six, seven. So we can divide it like that. So I just showed all the classification. Then I showed what happened in the book of Acts. A picture. Then I showed uh, a, a, a classification of the chapter in a particular. There's just images I put. There's no value in it. Okay. Now here comes the my writing of uh, the keys. So I took phase one keys of establishment and expansion of church in Jerusalem on one to six seven. I started writing the commissioning of Jesus, the role of the Holy Spirit. These are the keys I pulled out. Can you see how I developed it? And I have referred to some of the articles and all that stuff. The unity of the, among the disciples, the obedience of the disciples of Jesus, regular community prayers, uh, reality of their faith and kept pressing in spite of persecution. The leaders took responsibility in dealing with problems. These are keys I found in the first place. Can you see how many keys I got? 17 keys. Phase two, I got 12 keys. Phase three, I got nine keys. And of course, as a as we go forward reading book of you get bored, so you don't write much now. Phase four, I got nine keys. Phase five, I got seven keys. Now, can you notice I blackened or highlighted this because that is the key I'm writing. You understand? You can also write the key in the beginning, what the key is, and then you write the content. That's also possible. Phase number six, my personal ministry reflection. How I've been part of a part church planning network that I was. Born again, as I grew up in faith, I watched my pastors planting and establishing churches, the most difficult states of the gospel with the, for the gospel in South India. I was envisioned by my senior pastor through the scriptures to move into ministry in church. I was led by the churches in the technology corridor. One of my keys to churches that came around me. First church was running around churches. So I explained all this. But you know, must know, you must remember this is what I did, but it didn't reflect on some of the things. But here you can say establishing the gospel of key and teaching. So that would be something that I took from the competency that I wrote. Lord's presence, 
<coughs> direction through the journey as he spoke through his four offices and servants. I took it from the key. So I have now told that some of these keys actually worked in my life. But I have not told what did not work and how I am going to change. So actually it's not complete. But I got green tick in here, so it's okay. Can you see a sample now? So ministry reflection is written, finished. I have written 23 pages. Is that okay? A sample of how you need to write your article? <coughs> okay. I'll show you somebody else this article now. One second. Hold on. Um, one second. Just hold the line. Let's look at. Kumar sisters, okay. Bring this down, mind. Now I'm showing you this to not scare you. This is just to show you the number of ways you can write your article, okay? This is Suma's sister. She's not a theologian. She doesn't have church planning experience. She's just a teacher. And she has written it like this. Can you see how creative she is? Resource interaction. Of course, these are not these not give any value to you. But can you see this one? She's written praying as a function mentioned 29 times. She wrote that down. She wrote it from this. She can you see the reference she has made? Can you see the reference she has made? This implies the knowledge of other faiths or beliefs important. Okay. Then she marks things, resource interaction, timeline. Map, journey one, journey two, journey three, then acts one, one, keys to the establishment. She has written the keys correctly. Keys to the expansion of church in Jerusalem, keys separately. So expansion and establishment keys, she has written separately. And then she wrote 68 weeks of expansion and separately. Can you see how she has done it? Can you see all of it have verses attached to it? Timeline of Paul's missionary journeys. Conclusion. History of the St. Thomas Church. She's giving some of her issues. Some of her reflections she's writing. Present experiences. Future goals. Can you see how she's written her... Uh... Does that make sense? Now, are you all bold to write a paper? It's not rocket science. It's very simple. It's not academic like you write in a classical theological college where you have to quote that, quote this, not that. You have only those articles which are there to read. That's all. All right. Any questions, queries? Can you all attempt to do, read and write the acts and uh, try and do your map? At least one and two, and then do a collaboration. Some of you did collaboration, which is very good. Angel, have you finished your uh, one and two? Map? No, Pastor. Um, we had a collaboration session. So hmm. all the inputs that were given by um, Shubha and Pastor, I am working on those. Okay. Just put it in simple lines. Hmm. Okay, I'll just show you a map. How it map looks, okay? That will help you to you know from. I mean, you feel more comfortable. Uh, let's say let will take. Uh, who has done? Suma has done map. Yes. That ones. C 
see now this is Umar's step one and two. Okay. This template is already there. You can straight away download. So she had to fill in this data and then you start working on your achievement summaries. So she's written her achievement summaries. See 20 achievement summaries she's written. What she has expanded, she has marked in yellow. Okay, 20 achievement summaries. And she has marked in which age group it was when she did it, okay? Uh, then you have expansion number one. How you got, so the template is there. Just cut paste it and write into the template. Okay, that's what she did. So eight expansions are there. Once you finish your eight expansions, five, six, seven, eight expansions she wrote. Then she has collaboration. Can you see? Pastor George, Pastor Juju, and Pastor Joseph suggested on revising, expanding on my activity summary one. Pastor George helped me to further explain my work in activity summary three. Can you see the references? You have the collaboration work? That's all that you need to put it in there. Okay. So step one and two, you can upload. Okay. Is that okay? Any questions and queries? I know there's only questions and queries. Uh, you don't know probably where to ask and what to do, but don't worry. Step by step, we will drink the ocean. Don't worry. A drop at a time will drink the ocean. But if you look at the ocean and say, I will never cross this, nothing will happen. Any queries, questions? How are you feeling, all of you? Pastor, I have missed a lot of classes. So, yeah, I need to listen to all the videos and... Or if you want, you can join another batch. I will be joining and starting another batch in about a, in about a month's time, two months. You can, one, two, two months, you can join. So you can fresh start again if you want. Okay. It's up to you. Or you can sit here and slowly catch up and move on. You won't lose much time in the other batch because we don't know when the next batch will start. That's the thing. I got so many people, so many people asking me, I want to study. So they're joining me. So you can start a batch. Or... Uh, watch the videos, catch up, have discussions with me or with others in the group, and then you start writing and submitting and going on. If you read unit one, then unit two you can understand. Otherwise, unit two you will not understand. Okay. Anybody else? Any questions, guys? All right. I will let you go. Good night.